Theater 5 presents Ride with Death. Good evening. I hope we're hungry tonight. Dr. Prentice, call your office. Oh, why does everyone around a hospital use the royal we? And how are we feeling today? Did we have a good night? Is that what they teach in nurses' training? Why, you may not be hungry, but you're certainly irritable. Oh, I'm sorry. I I didn't mean to bark at you like that. I know. You seem to. Are you sure you've never had amnesia? Positive. Then how is it you're the only one who understands the fear, the terrible feeling of not knowing where you were before you woke up in the hospital? Why do you know that? The others know it, too. But they don't care? It isn't wise for doctors and nurses to become involved with patients. I see. Do you have any time? A little. I brought you your tray last. Afraid. I've never been afraid in my life. What did you say? I've never been afraid. You remember something. Just keep talking. Just whatever you think of. That's all. I I was never afraid before. There must be more. Now go on. Just say anything. You say, I've been here three days. The doctors say that I should regain my memory sometime. They don't know when. Tomorrow I'm to be sent to the city hospital and... and then I won't see you anymore. Oh, yes, you will. Every day. I thought it was against policy to become personally involved with patients. Uh, don't you want your dinner? It's really delicious. Chicken with rice. Arroz con pollo. Why did you say that? I don't know. You said chicken with rice, and I just knew that was arroz con pollo. Your clothes were American. Just because I know that chicken with rice is arroz con pollo doesn't mean that I'm not American. No, no, but there's an air about you, something that's not quite typical of Americans, and and the way you talk, it's just different somehow. Maybe we ought to stop trying to find out who I am if you're going to visit me every day, which I would like very much. Maybe it would be best if I didn't remember. I don't think you'd like that. Besides, I'm sure there couldn't be anything very terrible in your past. I wasn't thinking of that. And is it true that a lot of patients fall in love with their nurses? It happens, but it usually doesn't mean anything. Suppose it does. And suppose I were to find out that I'm married. But I am married. I remember... I. I'm married. And my name is Peter Coimba. And I live in... Wait. Anne, get a phone book. It's Benedict Canyon. I can see the house. I don't know the number. Do you have it? Yes. Peter Coimba, 2711 Benedict Canyon. Call my wife. Tell her where I am. She'll be down to get me. Yes, of course. No, I am... I remember myself. I remember. But, Anne, where was I found? At the foot of some rocks near Malibu. I don't remember getting there. It'll all come back to you now. Just a little patience. Hello? Hello. May I speak with Mrs. Coimba? This is Mrs. Coimba. This is the Samaritan Hospital, Mrs. Coimba. Your husband is here. My, My husband? Yes, he's quite all right. He was found unconscious four days ago at some cliffs near Malibu. The blow he sustained induced temporary amnesia. My name is Ann Kerr. I'm a nurse. Your husband recovered his memory just minutes ago, and I called immediately. Well, that was very thoughtful, but my husband is right here. Me. What? Would it help if you spoke with my husband? No. Uh, no, thank you. That won't be necessary. I'm sorry I disturbed you. There's something wrong. Anne, what did she say? She said... She said that her husband was home with her. But that's impossible. I know who I am. Peter Coimba. I remember now. Let me call her. Please, please, don't excite yourself. Give me that phone. No, you can't, please. It won't be good for you. You... You don't believe me. Oh, it's worse than that. Now I'm the one who's afraid. You haven't 
said much, Anne. I know. Did you do any checking last night? Yes. And everything I told you about Peter Coimba is true? Peter Coimba was a flamboyant playboy. Those stories I read in the newspapers were read by thousands, millions of people. And the marriage to Renee Nett was covered by every newspaper and magazine in the world. True. And the pictures? There hasn't been a picture taken of Peter Coimba for 15 years. All I can say is that there, there's a resemblance. But what about the details? How could I know all the little things if I weren't Peter Coimba? But if only there was somebody who knew you, a close friend or relative, a person who could look at you and say, yes, he is Peter Coimba. My parents are dead, and Alex, my brother... That... that was in the newspapers, too. Was it? Did they tell you about the rain? They mentioned it. Did the papers write about the track at Le Mans? That road that's sometimes gray, sometimes blue, sometimes black... But in the rain, it glistens and slides like a snake. Did they mention that the drivers think White House Corner should be renamed Blood Corner? Maybe you should forget about it. I can't forget it. I bet the papers didn't tell you how much it meant to Alex to beat me at Lamar. And they certainly didn't tell you how stupid I was to think that it was important to beat him. I told you it was raining. He passed me on the straight. And after he went by, it was like driving into a waterfall. I went after him, and we came to a right-angled bend called Arnage. I went through in low, but Alex didn't. And then we were heading for the White House corner. I went into it at 100, and as I came around the corner, there was Alex's big silver car across the track. There was a small opening between his car and the left side of the road. I didn't make it. You make it sound as if you were there. I was there, Anne. Believe me, I was there, and so was Alex. Now Alex is dead, and I'm here. Do you... Do you remember your promise? Yes. If things don't go well... And you must realize I still don't remember everything. There... I know, I know, but if things aren't as you say, you'll go to the city hospital. I promise. Here we are. Stop. Well, is the house just as I described it? So far as I can see. Yeah, this will be fine. Here's the entrance. Just as I described it. Now, you'll find the bell pushed to the right. And it, it isn't a bell, but a door chime. Uh, there's the bell. Push it. Well, go on. I... I'm frightened. Oh, nonsense. Let me... Yes? Renee. Renee! I'm home. I beg your pardon. I'm Miss Kerr. Oh, from the hospital. Yes, that's right. Won't you come in? Thank you. Well, Anne, is she exactly the way I described her? Exactly. And the house? Here's the living room. There's the window bay and the lake front. Uh, but there are changes, small things. They're, they're different. Uh, Renee, what have you done? And why? That is a good question. I have done nothing except open my house to an unfortunate man because Miss Kerr... I'm your husband. I think it's time you met my husband. Peter, Peter, will you come in, dear? Miss Kerr... This is my husband, Peter Kernbach. How do you do? Delighted, Miss Kerr. And this... This is a gentleman, name unknown, who had an accident and somehow believes he's you. Well, I'm flattered. I thought these people generally thought they were Napoleon. That isn't very funny. I'm sorry. Perhaps it was in bad taste. I know you. I do know you. I think we've taken up enough of these people's time. Wait a minute. You limp. Peter Coimba. I, I mean... I never walked with a limp. Perhaps because you were never in a smash-up as corner at Le Mans. Miss Kerr, I think that we've been more than patient. It upsets my husband to think about that accident. He's been a recluse for 15 years because of it. I will not have him annoyed. You mean this is it, Anne? This is all there is? What did you expect? Mrs. Coimba said her husband was home when I called last night. But I know the house. I know Renee. I described her. 
And now I've discovered that she's also a great actress. Let's find out if she can fool the police. No. Why not? For 15 years, Peter and I have tried to bury the past. Now, right or wrong, it was his choice and we've succeeded. And we don't propose to have it revived by a sick man whom we've never met. There'll be no police, Mrs. Coimbra. Well, I'm sure that would be best for you and your friend. We're sorry to have bothered you. Not at all. Bon chance. I know you. Now I know him, and I no know... No more, please. You're only hurting yourself. Please believe me. Why should I believe you? You don't believe me. Look at me. Look at me. And you'll find your answer. Coffee, as usual, is magnificent. Thank you. Well, what do you think? I think you have magnificent legs. And I think we have more important things to talk about. Oh, I was afraid you would. How can you sit there sipping coffee, looking so pleased with yourself when you've made such a mess of things? I'm pleased because I'm not a murderer. Can you understand that, Rene? He must die. How you hate him. And why shouldn't I? Take a woman like me and lock her up 15 years. Shut off from my friends, from life. Yes, I hate him. You could have left him. I was always available. Well, I didn't think it would last. I thought he'd get over it, and there was always the... The money. <sighs> yes, it's important. To me, too. And that's why he must die. You're inventing reasons because you want him dead. And you're afraid. What happens when he remembers more? He said he remembered who you are. What happened then? Nothing. Nothing? The idea was for an unidentified body to be found. No possible identification. No one claimed the body. He would have been buried and forgotten in due course. And you bungled it. I hit him. Not hot enough. All right. Let's look at the situation now. We were fortunate. Peter wakes up in the hospital. For three days, he can't remember who he is. Then suddenly he remembers. He is Peter Coimbra. But his wife, his own loving wife, who was voluntarily withdrawn from the world with him for 15 years, says that he is insane. <clears throat> and furthermore, she produces her husband to prove it. That was the best thing we could think of last night. An emergency. Something to give us time. Did you see that girl's face? She's a nurse. She believed it. The world will believe it, if the world hears about it at all. Peter will see to it. He mentioned the police. She won't let him go to the police. And what happens if he remembers that you were the one who hit him and pushed him over the cliff? He's gone completely mad, very sad, some kind of a persecution complex involving us. Oh, I... I just don't know, Paul. I do. Once people even get a hint that you're not right in your mind, any small action, no matter how innocent, if it's at all different, just strengthens their suspicion. Well, look at the girl's reaction this afternoon. Yes, that was very good. Whereas, if he's killed, and she begins to think, why... Maybe he was telling the truth after all. It's logical. Oh, but Peter will do something. Fifteen years ago, yes. Today, hmm, I'm not so sure. And I don't see what he can do. The more he protests, the more trouble for him. An asylum. That, that might be worse than dying. Exactly. And now, can we talk about your legs? <laughs> Oh, am I happy to see you. Here, let me pull this blasted curtain around the bed. And we can have some sort of privacy. I'm sorry that I'm late. I've been worried about you. Anne, you've got to get me out of here. They're putting me through all sorts of ridiculous tests, and I, I don't know what to tell them. You didn't say you were Peter Coimba. Why are you so afraid to have me tell the truth? Have you ever seen a mental asylum? Uh, this comes pretty close. Not close at all. But I told you, I remember now. I... I know the man who's pretending to be me. His name is Paul Vlacour. He'd been my financial advisor and friend. I asked him to come with me when we left Europe. Does anybody else know him? Dozens of people. Here in Los Angeles? Well, I, I don't know. I, I don't really know. What would you tell the doctors here? The truth. That I've regained my memory. I'm Peter Coimba, and Paul and Rene tried to kill me. Why? It's obvious. She became bored with living the way I wanted to live. After 15 years? Look, Anne, I don't have to answer all of these questions. I'm Peter Coimba. They tried... Please, please keep your voice down. That's why I don't want to talk to the doctors. 
I want the police. The police would only send you here for an examination. What are you telling me? That, that I should stay here? Let my wife and Paul kill me this way? Give up my identity, my house, my money? I... I love you. You know that. I just don't want to see you hurt. If you love me, why won't you believe I am Peter Coimba? Why would I say I was if I wasn't? Why would I pick the name of a man who's led the kind of life I have for the last 15 years? Why? I don't know. Maybe you were one of those men who love sports cars and racing and... Well, there are lots of reasons. Wait a minute. I think I have... Anne, could you get permission for us to go for a ride someday soon? I think so, yes. Will you? Why? You say you love me. Yes. Then... I want you to go back to Renee and Paul. No. Listen, tell them you agree with them. That you're having me transferred to a, a, a mental institution. Then ask them as a special favor to come along when you take me. They'll never come. I think they will if you handle it right. Now, if you tell them that you know I'm not Peter Coimba, that you're in love with me and want to help me and that it's going to make it easier for you to get me to agree to this transfer if they're not angry and, and are sympathetic. But why? Why should they? And then I want you to get a very special kind of car for the trip. What are you going to do? Will you do it, Anne? Will you? But I... I give you my word of honor if you'll do this. And if what I have in mind doesn't work... I'll do whatever you ask. Is it a deal? It's a deal. You handle the car well, Miss Kerr. Oh, thank you. Is this your car, Miss Kerr? I love Ferrari. Well, Mrs. Combe, it was difficult for me to get him to go to Rest Haven. The car helped, and... You helped tremendously. I want to thank you for coming along. Oh, we're very happy we can help. Where are we meeting? Uh, right here at the entrance to the hospital. Oh, there he is. Slide over, Anne. You're not... You're not going to let him drive. Nothing to worry about. I know the way. driving too fast. Slow down. I've handled cars like this at 170. If you don't mind my speaking from experience, this isn't a racing model and this road isn't Le Mans. She'll do 170. Well, I don't want to try. Oh, I don't know. We're coming to a right angle bend. Reminds me of Bulsan. Of course, this isn't so sharp. Hold your breath. I've lost my touch. He's trying to kill us. Don't you see? He wants to kill us. Please slow down. I'm asking you. Sorry. You fool. I told you he was mad. This is your doing, letting a madman drive like this. He'll slow down. You don't want to kill me, do you? I've forgotten what a thrill this is. We're coming to another corner. Reminds me of White House. You remember White House, Rene? And Paul? <laughs> Yes, that does it. Out. Rene, Paul, out. Here, in the middle of nowhere? Exact. Out. Well, then. Oh, Peter, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't believe you. I know. And now? And now we can drive slowly back to my house. The 
Together 5 has presented Ride with Death, written by Murray Burnett, directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, Elliot Reed, Alan Hewitt, Elizabeth Morgan, and Terry Keene. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Ralph Herman. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Mr. Lee Bowman. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. Thank <laughs> you.